FM, it's Mark Angel's Journey. It is early in the morning for me, 6.40 a.m. Um, I actually would like to have stay, stayed sleeping, but my brain couldn't stop thinking about my trades yesterday and how the markets decided to go in the opposite direction. Then we all know the market can do whatever the heck it wants to, right? But what's eating at me is, do I understand why, right? And... So I want to take a look at the price action and I think there's certain things that I need to focus on as well, like understanding what like the candles are actually saying, right, to me and review how I misread that, (laughs) which would have been a beautiful play. So all you folks that got that play, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Um, But for me, it's, it's a good... It's a good place for me to be because I need to understand why I lost. Um, Even after all of that that good setup, I got a couple of good trades in. I posted those in the community post so you can see them. Um, There was a 4% stop loss that got hit, but that was stupid because it's not the entry I wanted. And I pressed enter at 1200. I wanted to set stop limit orders below um, certain key levels for Ethereum and and then above. And then I, I, I set up everything and hit thing and it opened it up literally at market price for some reason. And then my silliness didn't just immediately close it. So another lesson. So if I don't want it, close it. Even if it's like a two percent, a, a zero point zero three percent loss, whatever, just just close it. So I'm going to take this time to take a step back and reevaluate my charts because I think they're slowly becoming a little bit crowded, <laughs> and I need to kind of simplify things a bit more and like take a closer look at what the what the the candles were telling us so if that sounds like a good time and maybe we can figure out a way we could have caught that beautiful move and maybe even like take a look at like you know because the markets had been going sideways for a while right since last week and maybe there's a certain amount of um retests and and drops that would weaken a support area that would like give us like some sort of indication. So if that sounds like a good time, let's do it. All right. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I am awake for, for me. And hopefully this helps you as well. <laughs> but first things first, um, let's go t- check out the news. Cause today is a, today is a good day for some news. It should be a pretty volatile day. So, um, we might get some good opportunities. Um, but we need to be careful. All right. Also, say hello to v- to Lou Finn's Viva card. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm going to make myself super tiny. Getting tiny. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so first things first, I wanted to, to jump on the coin market cap and just take a look at what the crypto market cap is overall. And, um, you know, it's hilarious because when I, at the beginning of years, I, it was at like two trillion. <laughs> so just, just, just to tell you, like, you know, this market cap just to get us back to like say 40 40 k would would have to be at two trillion right so we're nowhere close to being able to go back to the moon so mm. oh that's fun all right cool so we saw 853 up a point up a little bit from yesterday not bad um and i'm just curious about our our biggest winners and losers so i'm gonna plop this up on the 24 okay wow 20, 12% Phantom, Nair, Zcash, Ethereum. Yep, nicely done. Um, Polygon, Matic. So I'm also looking at um, learning other other coins that I can trade on a regular basis and just, you know, when Ethereum and um, Bitcoin are acting up. The other fun thing that w- when I popped in here was... Um, for the exchanges, it looks like they're adding reserve data. So you can come in here and see which exchange actually has enough money to sustain themselves, right? So like Binance, they've dropped reserve information in here. So, hey, look, financial reserves. Hey, that's nice. That's That makes life feel a little bit less scary, right? Depending on the reserve that you're trading on. So it looks like they've got, what, 65... What is that? Trillion? 
one, two, three, yep, $65 trillion worth of whatever, and they've got the token allocations so you can see it. What's kind of sad is my my exchange doesn't seem to have that big yet. <laughs> so, you know, definitely come out to CoinMarketCap if you're concerned. Come check that out. That's a nice, nice new feature they've added. And I really like them because I, um, I was using them to track. I am using them to track my, my like holding portfolio too. All right. So after yesterday's pull up, the fear and greed is at 29. So we've been like at 22, 26, 29. Oh, so it's still pretty fearful. We're not anywhere close to neutral just yet. And in terms of any particular types of news that's going on, well, Asia again is the first mover, despite investor unease. Um, yeah. Crypto lenders keep blowing up. Central banks and Bitcoin closer than anything. I saw... Um, Thomas Crawlow posted a vid today that Brazil, that Brazil um, is accepting um, BTC payments or something like that. Let me see. Let's search that up. Do, 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 do. Okay, Bitcoin Magazine. Brazil approves bill re re regulating use of Bitcoin as payment. That's pretty bullish. Well, I mean, what are we looking at here? Mass adoption, right? Slow, but slowly, but surely. So that's pretty cool. The company's capital, the new rules recognize Bitcoin as a digital representation of value that can be used as a means of payment and as an investment asset in the South American nation. That cool. Does this require any additional... Um, okay, the bill tasks executive branch with selecting government, government bodies to oversee the market. Okay. Um, was that sought to okay? So there's a big miss from Tuesday's vote was a rejection of a clause that sought to cut some state and federal taxes on purchase of Bitcoin mining machines. Well, I think that's always a some kind of um issue anyway. Anything else on the Bitcoin magazine here? What is all of this? Go away. Articles. Let's click on that. See what else we've got. Okay, so something about an Electrum Bitcoin wallet. Visiting El Salvador's kind of Bukel's Bitcoin country is neither utopian nor totalitarian, whatever that means. Ah. Okay, so a couple of good things in here for, for us to read. Last thing to look at real quick is Forex Factory. So today we've got um, coming at 8.15, ADP non-farm employment change. So apparently actual greater than forecast is good for currency. So if we see less, then that's pretty bullish for, for us. Um, and then the preliminary GDP actual is actual. So we're looking for less for that to be, I don't know, is it preliminary GDP is good for currency? This requires an annualized format. The previous list is actual, blah, blah, blah. It's a good measure of economic activity and the primary gauge of the economy's health. So if the GDP is higher, it's good, right? No? Yes? All right. Well, more things to learn and understand. Jolt's job opening at 10 a.m. So number of job openings during the... So I think this one's going to be the most important because the Fed's using... Um, Actually, no, that's unemployment, isn't it? My bad. But if there's a ton of jobs that are open and people aren't aren't taking them, that that's pretty um, somewhat indicative of, of unemployment, right? Maybe? Drop something down in the comments. I don't know for sure. Sorry, guys, it's a little dark in here. Let me turn on a light. Hopefully that doesn't flood me too much. <laughs> but that is a little bit better for, for a viewing. Okay, and then beyond that, um, Powell speaks at 1.30. So got to see what he says, if he's going to say anything about, you know, reducing the amount that he's um, dropping the uh, the interest rates at. So if we don't get, to, if they drop to 50%, you know, if, if he indicates that he's going to drop to 50% for the December rate heights, hikes, then that'll be pretty bullish. 
and it will be like an indicator of um, quantitative that they, they'll slow down and eventually flip from quantitative tightening to easing. Money printer time! Woo! <laughs> All right, enough of that. So, things to pay, pay attention to 8.30, 8.15, 10 a.m. So I might be setting myself some alarms. So I've actually removed um, all of my drawings and things that I had on here for Ethereum because that's what I was trading for the most part yesterday. And what I want to focus on is what could we have done to, you know, understand. Because ultimately, I was trading this juicy break right here, right? Expecting something. Because, you know, it broke beautifully. Red candle, red candle. Rebounded. Would have been nice if I'd also traded this this um, retracement back up to the break because that just makes sense. Things to 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 work on, right? Because obviously they made these big imbalances. So why the heck wouldn't we, you know, go back and and eat all of that? So let's take a closer look, right? So yesterday, I had this area basically marked out for an entry as a supply area. With, the, with an imbalance attached to it. So I was waiting for something to come up. So it did finally, right? And I took a short and actually got out at 12.08. It dropped all the way down to here, which put me at like a 4% uh, unrealized profit. But, you know, I was expecting it to go lower, so I didn't close it. But once I saw it turning around, that was when I was like, all right, let me get up out of here. So those are the, the trades that you saw me, the positive trades that you saw me drop in there and I had a Bitcoin trade that was kind of um let me open this one up as well I had a Bitcoin trade that worked like butter but my take profit was super close by and it made complete sense right because same scenario break right here beautiful got in at like 464 got out at 375 right here just quick in and out you know now, if I'd done that on a super high leverage, that would be great. But I'm using 5X because I'm smart and I am still a beginner and risk and money management is super important. Remember, leverage is a double-edged sword, y'all. Anyway, so then I actually had two Bitcoin trades, right? So once it dropped, came back up, I entered again and then exited with a really tiny, tiny, um, tiny, tiny profit on that one. And then it just kind of shot away to the moon, both of them. So let's take a look, right? Let's look at Ethereum first, right? So what could we have seen that was different um, from, say, this area right here that could have told us? Well, first, just looking at it on the one hour, right? Um, and let me take the moving average off here just, just to kind of just focus primarily on price, right? So the first real difference is this, right? So here, as I'm looking at it, we had this swing failure right here, right? Let's just mark that off. And we can actually roll to this, this whole area here. So we had this swing failure area here. And it's just an area where price has not been able to, to you know, break above. So that gave me a lot of like, about it dropping right and these two right here were perfect scenario because once you saw this like bullish engulfing you could just continue on down because you have this swing failure boom life is good right not to mention um <clears throat> the candles here weren't as you know like what is that a hammer red hammer telling you that, you know, they're testing the waters and stuff down here. At least that's what I'm thinking, right? Those things mean. If not, let me know down in the comments because I'm still learning, right? But look at the difference between the the areas, the preparations for dropping, right? Swing failure here. Here's a mini swing failure right here as well. So just plop that in there. And we made a lower high, right? Even though we had this higher low, we made this lower high. Over here though, and then we kind of were coiling downwards a bit, right? So if I were to do something like that, and then 
technically, if I ignore this and I just do like a sideways thing like that, then that would say, boom, we're going down, I'm yelling timber, right? Like if this is, this is the play. Now, this one is different, the way it looks, right? It's the opposite, going this way, we're coiling that way, and we're flat on the top. <laughs> wow. See, I didn't even notice that yesterday. How crazy. And this is only one hour, right? So understanding just pure technical analysis, right? So if I just done this and said from this point, once it broke, you know, I would have just been like, well, I could just take my profits there or I could take them at the next level where price likes to pull back to. Because as you can see it right here, look, look at this. Price pulled back to that level, right? Oh, look here. Price pulled back to that level or almost, almost did. Well, there is that guy. So almost pulled back to that level, right? And there's like a constant constant um continuation of that of that of that throughout right but this one was different look at it it had no swing failure these candles well this is a weak break technically right but price didn't drop any lower to give me a lower high it didn't do that so because it didn't do that i should have been like well mm -hmm. you know Hmm. So it's on the one hour. Let's go down to the 15 minute because this has been bothering me like in my sleep, right? So I'm going to take this supply area out. So let's look at this one first. So this one was making consistent lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. It had a break here. It had a higher low, but they were all pretty much even, right? So, you know, honestly, like once we had this breakout here, then could have taken that short down to there. Like for this one though, this is a little bit harder to, to recognize because um, we had this big bullish engulfing candle, which makes me feel like if the news is good today, then we're probably continuing on up, right? But we also had, let's look at it. So at this level here, we have this doji. Does that tell us anything? Let's think. Mm -mm. Oh, we, uh, mm, what is that? That's sort of like a neutral candle, isn't it? Mm. But these guys right here, like bullish engulfing on this uptrend we had all this wicking down here like it couldn't go any lower you know but this thing what got me yesterday is all the wicking to the top as well look at that it's just uh i don't know is there something on the lower time frames that would have been even more helpful let's see because on the five minute, this is a swing failure as well. So that, that would have made me take a short anyway, to be honest. So, hmm. But the flat top rising bottom should have been an indicator that it was going up. And perhaps, perhaps what I should be looking at, like if it's rising, it's at this level, maybe I should have taken something like that. Or or honestly, just set a stop limit order. Like if, for example, I saw it break above this thing right here, then take a long to the next area of confluence, which if I'm being honest was, yeah, somewhere about, I would have probably set it to about here, 1278. So something to think about for next time, I think. Yeah. As for right now, we are looking, looking like so. 
and it does look like a flat it's not quite flat but it's a flattish bottom like that so we could be breaking down to eat this news plays right so if they break down eat it to come back up i'm learning that if and let's go back and see so like i'm learning that if they're going to be continue up look what was that you know, they ate about what a third of it when there's a big candle like that well, that's a third they came back and ate but that was going sideways. That's that's different. I'm gonna have to like do some additional testing around this theory right here. See if I find more scenarios like this that would be um super helpful. <clears throat> Interesting. And I suspect that Bitcoin is this is a similar scenario. Let me let me clear out all my drawings here just to make life simpler. Let's go to the one hour. <sighs> And then let's take the 50 off, which I think is like a good indication. And I was looking at it and it was coiling. It was underneath price. And I was like, it's probably going to go up. Like, why am I so biased on the short? Like, I was so biased on the short yesterday. Right. So let's look at Bitcoin. Similar scenario looks like. Let's see. We do this. So. Right. So we came up. And we meandered about a bit. And we made this little area here, lower highs, lower highs, and it was making, and these were pretty, it was pretty flat for the most part. It's not as perfect as ETH, honestly, but there were higher lows and they were pretty close to, close together, which did make me feel like, yeah, so the technical breakout of that for a downtrend, did it did it meet it? <laughs> almost, almost. Anyway, so we broke back up, and then this guy. So we made a high, higher low. We never made a lower high. I mean, this one was a little was lower, and these candles were tidy. It's all retail, all retail, and all the wicks were. Let's look at this. The candles can tell us that flat wicks, rejections, just sideways, nothing exciting. Rejections. Do we also have a swing failure on this guy? Yeah, right here. All right. Now, after something like this cavernous thing, you can take a take a short into that imbalance, into this imbalance to this level again. But this didn't take very long. Like it was a, the move, the moves here have just been like in the one hundreds. Like usually you want to see like a thousand dollar move in Bitcoin, at least for it to be worthwhile. I think. Let me see. So kind of mostly flat on this one, but I did a little bit of an angle. And if I were to take it from here, something like that, something is definitely coiling upwards, you know? In which case, my target for it, since it's coiling upwards, should have been something like that. Um, that one would have been pretty spot on. Should coincide with another area where price paused and stopped at, yeah. Could have even stopped up here, since it came up there and, and hung out for a while. I'm conservative, so I would have gone for this higher high right here. Interesting. Let's go down to the 15 minute time frame and see what the candles were looking like for this break upwards. Do we have any, any impetus? We did actually. We had this juicy, uh, semi-juicy break right here. And then literally, look, we just retraced back to this level around the break. Man, that happens a lot, doesn't it? That's, we just, we just retraced back up. We made what is essentially, let's zoom in on that. Look at that wick. Yeah, that was very, is that bullish? It's like a 
hammer, but it's like at the end of this thing, back to, back into a level of um, support. And then it flew away. Definitely have to focus a little bit more on, on what the candles are telling me, honestly, because this is kind of a bullish engulfing, right? Even with the wick. And there's barely... Is there, is like, there's a tiny wick. Let's zoom in. It's a tiny, small wick on the bottom. But look... It's still higher up this wick. It's not quite fully bullish engulfing, but from a body perspective, it is. You know, sellers brought it all the way up here. Buyers were like, hell yeah. And then sellers were like, come back. And then they came back in and said, we are in charge. Now that's that's a good indicator right there. I think I need to I need to pay attention to those things. Maybe simplify my trading style a bit more, you know, and see. That's interesting. But look how often those types of pullbacks happen. You know? In this sideways market, it's not as easy to spot. But, yeah. Let's go back over to this one. What did we have? So this drop right here. And I think my thing should be like that. Something like that. Just to encompass, like, the bodies. The bodies. Couple touches, one, two, three, one, two, three. So, okay. So it dropped. So if we look at the top of this thing, and we could probably readjust this to be a little bit more accurate, but just for funsies while well, we're while we're doing this, right? It came up to this level right here, right? And on the 15 minute, what do these candles tell us? Oh, look at that bullish engulfing. Barely a wick, flat bottom. Um, it's like a, it's almost like a doji, like an indecision, but not quite, right? But it's a, it's a bullish engulfing candle, even if it doesn't engulf this wick, but it does engulf the whole body. I've probably taken the short from here since it was at this level and, and just kept it moving, you know? Interesting. And then, of course, it likes to stop at levels that it's it's hung out at before. Look how spot on that is. Equal lows. Look at that. Equal lows. Boom. And then it paused. And then gave us a lie of a morning star. Went up for a smidge. But it, came, it gave us this break. And then continued dropping quite beautifully. But price did come back up into it. To the level. And then dropped a bit. Market structure is so fascinating. Anyway, definitely need to pay closer attention. So what are we looking at for Bitcoin? So it looks like we have a similar scenario. This guy is almost flat again. Like so. And sideways movement. You know, that's, that's going to be very hard to determine are we breaking no it's just going sideways so if seeing that we're making it's basically flat you know if the news is is bad we might be breaking down in here to eat some of this imbalance because we've made a lower high and we haven't really given us anything juicy to work with this guy had a break They've come back down into the break, but not gone anywhere. So, yeah. Oh. All right, guys. I think that's 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 good for a review. I think what I'm going to do is I'll be running, since it's still so early, I'll be doing some backtesting videos, and I'll post those later. Um, in terms of what the heck's going to happen, who the heck knows this morning, okay? I It's all flat. It's all flat. So... Uh, be careful with the news. Um, be careful with your trade setups. I'm going to be thinking through what those are going to be for me as well. Most likely, I probably won't be putting anything in until after the um, after 10 o'clock anyway. All right. So happy hunting. Be safe. Shakira. Bye.